GVM. But as you can see, I'm recording episode six called Open Morgana's Triangle Character Bogdan, Morgana, Ko Cheng Yu, uh, Merlin, and Arthur. Gelt. Gelt. The Gelt boys. And action. Do we have a script? Can I get uh can I get a no. hallelujah? What did is it is what does it say on the uh drag May request May I request an amen? Did they say that on the TV show? She says can I get an amen? Who Thank says you. that? RuPaul. Every episode is that like a catchphrase? Yeah, you can't love yourself. How the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? Amen. Now let's the music play. To the music. Away. Sashay away, you you are and always will be a spectacular drag queen now sashay away exactly superstar sponsor and action oh what a beautiful day at the seaside morgana it is lovely here husband bogdan splash splash i love he 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 i love splashing in the waves and what about you fool oh it's brilliant love it absolutely bloody <laughs> love being here at seaside me too it's nice to put everything behind us and just have a adventure i've never Let's even walk. been to a beach where the sun is shining so much and the waves are crashing I i'm ready for an adventure i don't mind saying it you do look like that. You look like you're ready for an adventure. Let's have a picnic. <laughs> Arthur, yeah. Merlin. Well, I'm, I'm you? enjoying your I'm enjoying your company as well, fool. Uh, love, love hanging around with you, and of course, my beautiful wife Morgana. Oh, it's brilliant! Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. You just came. And you just turned up. It wasn't. There was no invite necessary. Let's just put the blanket down here. Let's have some mocktails. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm all at twos and fours, I'm all penned and skimmed, and I'm swaying on my feet. Ha 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 ha, it's me vitamins, ha ha ha, it's me vitamins, ha 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 ha. Oh, you're mental, what are you doing? I can't say that anymore. Oh, I've ripped my clothes off though. That's what I'm doing. Jesus, fool. Oh, you know what, what he's done? Drinking. You know what he's done, Morgana? He's mixed up the, the mocktails with the cocktails. He's, he has? He's bloody leathered. He's had 15 Don't of them. Did you give him off? This is why I won't let him hold my purse. I gave him my purse and he bought a peanut farm. That nice. little tiny one. Lost, that was lost, nice, lost me 400 million pounds one morning. Well, the situation is becoming more dire. Oh, he's stumbling Boom. drunkardly towards the sea. Foo! Stop! You'll hurt yourself. You mad man. Foo! Grab him. Grab him. He's beyond. He's too far gone. Oh! I'm a too, too far too gone fool. I'm a too far gone fool. Uh, splash, 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 splash. <laughs> it's me vitamins. It's me vitamins. <laughs> Don't worry, Morgana. I will chase after him and I will get him. He's not a very big man and I'm sure I can subdue him quite easily. Oh, splash, splash, splash. Oh, but the waves are rough and the current is strong. It is hard for me to keep up. Well, they've been out there for ages, boys. Let's just enjoy the picnic. But also, let's just worry and pace back and forwards with fear. The sun mother, is beginning mother, to set. Mother, the sun is beginning to set. I'm, I'm proper free. I'm proper freaking for what's happening with my dad out there wrestling with that. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> That's not okay. The Chinese man. That's better. Go tell it on the mountain. Yeah, it's Mother, not you, good, seem, it? you seem beside yourself with fear, Mother. I am. Do not worry. Do not worry. My family, I have saved food. Oh, he's passed out, but I think he's going to be okay. He's shivering. Get him a blanket. Mother, can we start our picnic now? Um, yeah, I guess so. Just wrap food like a caterpillar in some kind of warmth. <laughs> There's a load. The, the amusement park's really picked up, hasn't it, since since nightfall? Oh, let right me just down. stand up loud and proud and have a look over here at that amusement park. I love me some you are you inches. Love me some amusement parks, me. Oh, what was that? Oh, what? What's happening? A rogue T-shirt cannon lies on the floor. Did it's that hit, hit me again? Stomach, oh, it's hit me again. Oh, oh no. I have been it square in the gut by a flying t-shirt and you wouldn't think it would hurt too much, but it bloody has. I tell you, I'm, I'm doubled over here, clutching my stomach in pain. Well, I've rushed to your side. <laughs> panic is setting in. Mother, Ogden's... are you panicking here? Because I am, Mother. Yes, panic is setting in. Uh, ring an ambulance. Mother, Merlin. call for an ambulance. What, what number is it? 91119? Yes. Run. Nine one seven two three four one two six five. Cycles. 
Yeah, ring. You ring quickly. We're not off time for this. He's dying. I'm, I'm faded. I'm faded, my guy. I think it's ruptured me shatner's bristled. Exactly. Hold in. Hold in the Bogdan. And the ambulance is on the way. We're here. Let's get him in. What about that Chinese man that's asleep over there? No, he's okay. Leave him. Leave him. I'm the one that needs treatment. He's just cold. No, Nino. I want a Nino. 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 I want a Nino. 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 I want a Nino. 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 I say a Nino. Nino. Well, Doctor, how is Bogdan, my husband, doing? Um, he's been treated for a condition we like to call death. <laughs> What? He's dead. But oh. it would be easier if I said it that way. It wasn't. Oh. Three oh. months later. Oh, this grief's still fresh in my heart. Merlin Thadley, Arthur Radley, come in here and eat these mocktails. Now, I'm okay. so... Okay. I am going through the motions of my daily routine here. Just constantly. Just talking to myself. This is no, a diary. No, no. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm not Maud. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. How are you doing? I'm all right, Foo. How are you? Have you warmed up yet? Been warm for ages, me. I, I didn't die. He, he, he. Humans. Savage. Well, th despite you just saying that, you've always been a supportive presence in my life. But um, just between me and you, camera, I have a twinge of unease about this situation. Enough of that. I don't want to waste no more time. I love you, and I want you to come to China with me and help me uh, set up a new peanut farm and get Sinopec out of debt and also destroy my new enemy, Di Hao. Who? That name again is Di Hao. And who is that? He's a powerful and dangerous criminal what's been causing all kinds of bloody nonsense over in China. And I need your help to bring him to justice. Well, I'm torn. Tell me more. D there, is, there is no more. That's it. That's everything. Oh, well, on one hand, I feel a sense of duty to protect Fu. To help you, Fu. To help Fu, Fu. And protect the innocent. The innocent aren't really in any danger. This fella just seeks out the guilty. Oh, well, um, he's Will still... Will you come and help me protect like, the guilty? Yeah, he still sounds like a bit of a rum. Nah, so, he's a yeah, nice you know, lad, actually. Looking into your kind and loving eyes now, Fu Pemmonskem, I can't let you face this enemy alone. Let's go to China and do whatever it takes to defeat Di Hao. I am still reeling from the loss of Bogdan, though, so no more jokes, please. All right, game plane. Come on. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Plane sounds. Can I bring the boys? Were you already, Mum? And I'm so excited oh. to go on an adventure together. Do you know this is in the bomb? You're the trial where all of them singles disappeared in 70s. I can't. I'm busy. I'm on the phone. I need to ring my parents now. Ring, ring. Mum. Ring, ring. Mum. Dad. Can you hear me? Oh, God. Is that you? I'm on a flight to China. I'm going to help my friend Fu take down a criminal. China? That sounds dangerous. Have you lost your bloody head? But there's something else I need to tell you both. My parents, Rochelle and Nanook Huntington. I've been keeping a secret from you. I. Ladies and gentlemen, the pilot has switched on and fastened the seatbelt sign. Please return to your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Insert like noise. What kind of are you there? What's happened? Is she, she alright? Not no, she lied and just went dead. Oh bloody hell. Bring her back. Right. Bring her back. Bring her back. Beep 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 beep. Just no answer. Bring her again. No answer. Bring her again. No answer. Maud, a guinea pig aficionado with the tuppence as a cherished pet. She'll dress him in tiny outfits. It's an adorable sight you won't forget. With the collection of photos, she share their adventures. Near and far from tea parties to rock concerts, their bond is truly bizarre. In the realm of fashion, Maud Flanders had a peculiar taste. She adored French comics and became a lover of the unique aesthetic paste. She frequent French supermarkets for inspiration and style. Her Instagram feed showcased her electric fashion with a distinctive smile. A voice like no other. Maud Flanders had a Midwest girl next door charm, but her intensity and accuracy would sometimes rise and disarm. Her spoken word poetry became a sensation at the local coffee club, spitting oh. rhymes that defied expect expectations with a fiery hub. It's the Maud Flanders, that new style of song did not work. Season <laughs> 9, Episode 7. Six.
<laughs> Who would have believed it? Who would have even thought it? Fresh chatbot to write me a new mod, Flanders thing, and although I do like that little <laughs> bit about Toppins and dressing him up in tiny outfits, the rest of it was garbage. Yes, no, I can <laughs> tell it's chatbot. I didn't know what. Think, what's this Instagram bit? Have we done that? And coffee cub. Anyway, listen. New character, coffee cub, Snaggy's son. Snaggy's son, son of Snaggy and Jin. Jin for the... But let's just, let's just <laughs> all calm down a little bit. So it's just me and you, Stamps over there, Rod Hobgoblin, who seems to have been hiding animate carbon Todd for the whole time, who's now out and about. Snaggy and Jin from Lost. Flimsy and Rosewater are still here somewhere, I think. And we've got... Yeah, got there's no shops here. We have to get to Zanakas' castle before he fully turns Pierre Derrida into a vampire forever. Yeah, what are the stakes for us in that again? No, but none. But we will get to, oh. to bring Maud back. Something about dustbins. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I remember the palace. We need to get to the palace for our own. I wondered why we were helping so much. What do you think, Snaggy? I mean, Jin. Snaggy, you're a dog. I meant Jin. Uh, or does probably <laughs> anyway let's all jump on this bike board that's been left and um no gin you can't that can go that can get cut that can get cut <laughs> get on this bike boat come on splash 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 chicka 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 this is a huge huge sort of mystical pond splash. quite beautiful in a way like a moat it's... isn't it but it's it's not really attached to his castle it's um yeah it's nice i like the waters a bit epic um, music happening oh my it. god what is that giant monster rising from the depths it's a kraken and who's it being ridden by it, is that it can't be who is, is it jim do you know her yes that is susan penhaligan from uh the 70s and the 70s but june what are you pointing at there others what, what do you mean others ah, oh my god he's been drowned in kraken milk he was trying to warn us oh he meant actual others this time i was just looking around for more people well jim's yeah, dead i am jim from lost but I have been found by death. Goodbye, Jin. Oh, I hold on. Over there, here, at the, uh, on the edge of the lake. You see who it is? It's the band Penhaligon's Kraken that we saw a few episodes ago. Uh, great, great band. Did a lot of great albums in the 70s and 80s. Um, oh, yes. Lots, lots of music. Oh, they've been killed by the band, by the Kraken. Oh, my goodness. Look, they, I assume the band named themselves after the Kraken, but if you look, one of the band members, um, Colin, Colin Monty, uh, he he stabbed the Kraken in the eye, like the actual Kraken, not the band, and that went down as well. So oh, that's good. Well done. So their their death was not um, for now. Exactly. What sure, do you I'm... think, Stamp? You've been very quiet and all this. I'm sh to be honest, I'm struggling to take it all in, Nathan. Really? So while we're here, though, why don't we do some uh, some sponsors? Well, we're, now that the Kraken has been defeated. Let's. In let's the shadows, a secret they did hide. Tepco's missteps took us for a ride. With NG for every challenge they've complained, but missteps and blunders left us ashamed. Hydrogen they joined, <laughs> a daring game to play, causing chaos and flames. Oh, what a dismay. Walk in a tide tumbled. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a good taste, to be honest. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> in upstate New York, a family hides, escaping the fallout and seeking peace beside. It's 25 years since, and Tepco's troubles kept a similar light. Let's learn from their errors and laughter, reclaim a future where safety and smiles remain. For facing the challenges, we'll find our way and embrace a brighter and wiser day. Most of that is being chopped out. Yes, it was nice though. It was nice, wasn't it? Um, that is a reference to a energy company that uh, was no good and did a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, sounds like they did a lot more than I thought they did. My sponsor is Scott Walker, R.I.P., is my first sponsor. What do you call Scott Walker when he's relaxing at home? Scott Walker, R.I.P.? Coach Walker, R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Scott Walker bring a ladder to his concert? Wouldn't it be Scott Liar or Scott Resting? Scott Lying Down? <laughs> it would be not Scott Walker. Walker would be the one that got changed. Walker would be the obvious one to change. What was his second job? Why did Scott Walker bring a ladder to his concert? Because because he wanted to reach new heights with his music. <laughs> Awful. Yes. 
sponsor, King Louis XIV, in the realm of King Louis' fancy and good. One king, one law, one faith, understood the Huguenots' face, merciless crackdown, the whispers of the mask, they went all around. Debauched noble men and scandalous affairs, failed assassins and expelled twin heirs. Finch's West domain, <laughs> Richelieu summons a looming bane, but fear not, for Mazarin was there to fill the king's palace with wisdom and care. In this light-hearted tale, let's find some delight in King Louis the Fourteenth's grandeur and might. That one was better, except for one of the lines, but I liked uh, failed assassins and expelled twin hers is a good line. <laughs> it is. That should be our motto. Yes. One of them. The sponsor, Rolling Eyes Girl, aka 124 Girl, aka Jennifer Byrne, I believe. How did the girl react when Susan Boyle proved her wrong with her an amazing performance? She rolled her eyes. <laughs> she rolled her eyes so hard she nearly saw the back of her head. <laughs> What did the girl say when Susan Boyle hit a high note? Uh, I guess her singing is I incredible, but I'm still not impressed. <laughs> I too impressed, isn't she? Anyway, takes a, takes now a village. We've, we've crossed the lake and um, we're into the area, which is another abandoned lab. I hope John Cage doesn't come back. And um, we we've who, who's that there? He's, is that Darren Scaramouche or Daniel Scaramouche? He's one of the Scaramouche lads. One of the boys. I thought we'd already seen two of the Scaramouches. One was killed in space and the other one, what happened to him? Um, one of them's on an island. Is he still there in the lab? Oh no, he got defeated by a normal man, so he's dead. Not good for the Scaramouches. Anyway, third Scaramouche, what's, what's his name, Dave? Probably Dave Scaramouche. Yeah, yeah my name's Dave. Dave. My name's Dave Scaramouche. Um, I'm daft one of a rope, uh, but I can show you how to get into the castle. Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> Oh my god, he's been oh, ripped to shreds. Down. He's, been get, he's been Scaramouche, another Scaramouche has been ripped to shreds by a wolf. Is that, not just not, any wolf. That's not just any wolf, is it? Look at it, there's, there's cash dripping from its pockets. How much? Can you count it? 3,998. Three. Oh. And that's, oh no, there's two more here. $4,000. It's the Roswolf. Oh my god, it's Maggie Roswolf in the form of a wolf. I thought she was in California. I did. I thought she was in California with her son in the night. Anna McCabe and Todd Roswell. And her and her husband in Max Strong Graham Roswell and her son and daughter Jasmine and Farquhar. I think we call saxophone and bootaboo. <laughs> anyway, she's tossing the body of Daniel or Daniel Craig or Daniel Scaramouche Craig, tossing him asunder and ripping out his oogly googlies. But now she's coming towards us. Oh my god. Somebody say us. This? Flimsy, what shall we do while we're here? I'll save you. I've got no better else to do. I'll take Attack. her down. Human oh, automated you... munch munch. Human no. automated munch munch. Munch, 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 munch. Oh, oh, scratch, scratch. Munch, munch. Scratch, scratch. Oh. Put some wolf sounds in here. Oh. Scratch, scratch. Oh. Munch, 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 munch. I've, I've beaten her, but it's He's too much. He's defeated her now. But it's too much for me. Oh, oh. God, he's dead as well. This is this is uh, not going so well. We've lost another Scaramouche. We've lost Human Automated Munch Munch. All of Penn Halligan's cracking. Anyone Jane. else? And Jane from Lost. Jane from Lost. Uh. And every other friend we've had. So, so We came down, we came to this principality with about 30 friends. And now we're down to us two, Stamp and Rod Hobgoblin, and oh, our cousins, geez. our cousins. So we got we got one of the Hobgoblins left, Stamp. Uh, our cousins, our cousins. That's it, isn't it? It's just the the well, six of us. A Snaggy. Derrida. Derrida's still off on a secret mission with some Derrida's... of the members of um, Vanilla, including. Well, they were all dead. Temporary Ashley member Ashley's dead, isn't she? And uh, yes. Well, we don't know that. We do. We seen a portal. Oh yeah, we did see a portal. Well. Well, we don't know where Derrida is then. No, we don't. Hang on. I tell you where text? He, I'll tell you where one version of Derrida is. Riding a hamster? Yeah, I'll tell you where another version is. I mean, in a sponsor you. race. In a sponsor race, yes. Would you, the front runners of the sponsor race. Scott and Cindy. Nice. 
do get fresh with me. Oh, it's God. the Mordcast, official sponsor race, episode only bloody 10. Remaining contestants, 7. Recording. Last week was the Model of Perusa, which saw all the eliminated sponsors return to Flandball against the current sponsors for their place in the race. All but one of our current contestants won their respective Flandballs. 124 girl lost her Flandball against Vivacious, meaning 124 finally went the fuck home and Vivacious got to return to the competition. What? Welcome back, Viv. Now, for today's mini challenge, please welcome a special guest deceased celebrity chef, James Martin. The seven of you must endure his all-you-can-eat aeroplane curry competition. Good luck, and perhaps you've heard of the Yakuza, the poison fist of the Pacific Rim, the Japanese Mafia. Go! Bloody hell, it stinks in here. Ooh, let off. Was it you, Fu? Well, either way, you've won, you wicked bugger. Congratulations! You've won a decade supply of deceased James Martin's curry juices. What a great prize. We have to accelerate the investment. For Maxi Challenge number 10, we are about to shock your ass with some extra special guests. Your very own friends and family. That's right, we brought each of you a pal, and it's your job to get yourself and said pal into Flanders family resemblance eleganza reno good luck and perhaps you've heard of yakuza the poison fist of the pacific rim the japanese mafia so without further ado let's bring in our friend and family here for our island buddy cindy chandler please welcome libby Michael. and here's your buddy foo it's your successor wang yu poo for Vivacious, we've brought in an animate fabric, Ornisha. Welcome. Who's Ornisha? I don't know who that is. The mannequin hair girl. Davida, say hello to your non-vampire son, Daniel Derrida. Je m'appelle Daniel Agassinski, je suis délégué général à la médiation. Jenny, battle down the hatches, because for you, we brought in Anne the Governor's Egote. You type absolute. I'm certainly bigger than anything he's ever put. For you, Scott, please welcome Gary Leeds Walker. Originally, I came over here with first the PJ Proby. And finally, Onion, for you, please welcome the cheeky, cheeky sleeping horse that is Stephen. Stephen! Now let's take the runway and see these mod formations unfold. Cindy Chandler and Libby Smith Servitinker turn bull twins lurk queen. Fu Chen Yu and Wang Yu Poo turn out in a Ned and Mod lurk diva. Vivacious and Arnisha are giving fresh tilapia with their mod and tiny toddy lurk hunty. Jacques Derrida and his non vampire son Daniel present a mod and rod lurk girlfriend. The vixen and the governess spoon out a Marilyn and Frank Goodman lurk the boots down house. Scott and Gary Walker some rest in peace supply a ghostly mod and Edna Lurk, spill that Jesus. Onion and Steven presented Ginger Flanders and Sarah Sloan Lurk, rock ha ka tt tartar, yes I am pussy bitch, ooh la 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 say bon, say bon, doko chocolate ha la you cannot take my snatch, drag it up, wheel it up, give me more, bring it to the ball. Shiddy Chandler and Scott Walker R.I.P. gave Libby R.I.P. and Gary Leeds Walker great mod makeovers. Jenny, Onion, and Vivacious did just a good job transforming the governess, Stephen the Horse, and Ornasia into mods. And unfortunately, oh, your phone just went off. And unfortunately, Fu and Derrida did a shockingly bad job turning Wang and Daniel Derrida into mod Flanders. Ooh. Welcome to the main stage of the Mordcast official sponsorship slogan. Welcome to the main stage of the Mordcast official sponsor race. I am Beef Skellington. That's right. Since this season begun, I have died. Please welcome our regular judges, Brendan and Nathan O'Leary, and Pants Umblees, whoever he is, and give a warm welcome to our extra special guest, Judge Christina Aguilera. We bow to you, Overlord Xtina. Xtina? Christina. Silence, Xtina. Get back in that bottle. Sponsors. Welcome back, sponsors. We've made some decisions. When we call your name, please step forward. Scott Walker, R.I.P. Jacques Derrida, Fu Cheng Yu, Cindy Chandler, Onion, Jenny, <laughs> the Vixen Ryan. You represent the tops and bottoms of the week. Which means, Vivacious, you are safe. You may step to the back of the stage, mother. Cindy Chandler, Scott Walker, R.I.P. Congratulations. You are the two holiest rollers of the week. The signals were out really Ladies and gentlemen. The captain has switched on the fancy seatbelt sign. Jacques Derrida, Fu Cheng Yu, you are the two of the wettest blankets of the week. I'm sorry, my dears. Onion, Jenny, one of you will be safe, and one of you will join Fu and Jack in the bottom. Jenny, the Vixen Ryan, you are the third wettest blanket of the week. I'm sorry, my dear, 
Onion, you are safe. Scott Walker, R.I.P. Cindy Chandler. Prior to tonight, you were arrested for per a flan ball performance of Tum Bumpkin by the now balloon Mantica Orchestra. The time has come for you to flan ball the look and perhaps you've heard of Yakuza, the poison fist of the Pacific Rim, the Japanese Mafia. The truth is, I thought it mattered. I thought the music mattered. But does it bollock as compared to how people matter? Ladies, we've made our decision. Dutch Walker, rest in peace. You're a winner, baby. Congratulations, you have won a 10-day stay at Bible camp where you can learn to be more judgmental. Cindy Chandler, you're also a winner, baby. Winner, winner, two chicken dinners, which means you have also won a 10-day stay at Wigan's Best Resort. Try not to stay there for the rest of your life, raising someone else's children while worshipping a new deity. Will our wettest blankets please step forward? Foo, Jenny, Jax. As you just saw, both Scott and Cindy won the flamball contest Test, which means they both have the power to eliminate one of you. As always, prior to the flan ball, the top two sponsors choose a wind chime with one of the wettest blankets names on it, which they then reveal upon winning the flan ball. If both Scott and Cindy choose the same sponsor, only one contestant will be leaving us. But if they made separate choices, two of you will be going home tonight. So Scott Walker, Cindy Chandler, with great power comes great flan stability. Which of the bottom sponsors have you chosen to get the chop? Cindy Chandler, with great power comes even more fun stability. Which sponsor have you chosen to get the chop? Please pass your selected wind chimes over to our special guest, me. Gasp. <gasps> Gasp. <gasps> 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 Gasp, as it is written, so it shall be done. By the hand of Scott Walker, Fu Chengyu, and by the hand of Cindy Chandler, Jacques Derrida, you both are and will always be superstar sponsors. Now Sasha, away. Arguing or point fingers does not work. Sur le caractère totalement euh, artificiel cette situation. I guess that means next week is the semi-final. That worked out well, didn't it? Congratulations, semi-final sponsors. And remember, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love someone else? No, that's not it. It's can't you think of the children? How the hell are you going to think of nobody else? Next week is the semi-final. <laughs> May I request if it is not too much trouble? An amen. Remaining contestants, five. Now let the music play. Two, 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 to the moon. To the moon. Ooh, 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 ooh. I would like to take you away. Two, 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 to the moon. To the moon. Ooh, 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 ooh. I would like to take you away. Two, 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 the moon. Mucho thank you. Boo and Derrida, both gone. Nice. Speaking of, so you can edit that in before the uh, Roswolf attack, is that right? Yes, I might just leave it there, though. All right, fair enough. Well, here's the text actually coming through from, from Jock, who doesn't seem to to put out by being eliminated from the sponsor race. So I'm no. unsure as to what the time frame is for this kind of stuff. Yeah, sponsor um, race was filmed a year ago for these people. Oh, right, of course. Your TV in it. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, sent a us text? a text, though. Yeah. Can you read it? Yes. Stuck. Stuck in. Stuck in traffic. Ashley dead. Derrida. Metaphysics is a closed system. Crying, laughing emoji. What um, what do you think any <laughs> any of that relates to um, to Maud Flanders? Is she stuck in traffic? Is she dead like Ashley? Is she Derrida? Does she believe that metaphysics is a closed system? 
we have seen her stuck in traffic. We have seen her dead. We have not seen her Derrida. Um, what is metaphysics? I've never metaphysics I didn't like. Exactly. Uh, it's a system of, uh, of of beliefs, surely, about physics. That's exactly what it is. Um, I think she would be more into this than regular physics, because it's more meta. More she likes meta, to... is she? No, but I can see her pondering things like, what is the relationship between mind and body? What would she think? Or... What would she say about such a question? Um, I think she would say they were deeply connected, as she is a healthy woman. From what we can mostly tell, except for her secret shame with ice would she, cream. Would you say in a very specific Maud Flanders way, or a much more chatbot-generated way? Much more chatbot-generated way. An incredibly generic, non non Maud answer. Yeah. So if that, that I just I just chatbotted what metaphysics was. The rest of it was all me. It's all you. What does but she no. does she think metaphysics is the closest thing? Is is it to her? Um. Yes. See, here's the idea. So metaphysics is is supposedly in those meta things. They're supposed to be more open. Right? They're supposed to be more of a of a of interpretive. A, interpretive, right? But they're not. Jacques saying that even you can't get out of the loop. There is, you know, which is why he has to deconstruct the metaphysics and deconstruct all of the relationships. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here, isn't it? Really. Exactly. That is, I think that's why he's here in general, isn't it? Speaking of so. loops. Spe um, speaking of what year is this R, give me a number between 1 and 300. Yes, I will. Derrida does live outside of the loop, but Maud does not. Maud lives firmly within the loop, so I think that she would I think that she would agree that it's a closed system. He would. She'd know it and she'd like it as well, wouldn't she? She wouldn't be bothered. Yeah. She isn't here for big, shocking world revelations. Three yeah. or four. Three or four, three oh four, three zero four. Yes. Simpsons icons. Certainly. Lewis. These are great. Lionel I Hearts. remember these. These are very early internet creations. Two millhouses. Millhouse head only. Millhouse head and torso. I don't like my the idea of my Simpsons icons having two millhouses in the same day. Maud Flanders, a face forward Maud Flanders, no less. Yes, and our friends from the cast cast, uh, Lunch Lady Doris and Lionel Hutz. Lyle Lanley. These are... McAllister. I very much... What is this kind of art called? I can't remember. It's Eight just bit. sort of like... Yeah, like these were... You could have these as like mouse cursors and folder icons and stuff in the early days of the internet. And they oh, did clearly they covered a lot of characters because even on this you've got Lyle Lanley and Mendoza. <laughs> Where does Mendoza fit into the grand scheme of things? He's um like a McBain villain. Which, yeah, this yeah. is fun, I don't know if you ever noticed this, and I didn't realise this until, well, I don't think anybody did, but until, like, a couple of years ago, but the McBain clips that they show in The Simpsons across episodes, if you put them together, they kind of make a McBain movie. Yeah, I've seen it, it's on YouTube, it's good. Though. Yeah, I didn't know that for a long time. I didn't know uh, it the Maud, it. Out of all of these, the Maud seems to have the most detail, I would say. In it's got a little bit has. of a skeleton nose. Yeah, she has, but she's got blue eyeshadow and lipstick, and the rest of them don't have a lot of colour going on, other than maybe Millhouse's glasses. Look at Lou's eyes. You can't even see them. Little eyes, hasn't he, Lou? That's always not been his problem. Pem and Noah. Um, she's probably yeah, the no, best, like although this. Mendoza is good. I'd like to do the Mendoza cast. That would be fun. Um, and we are treated here to our... I think this is the first official Face Forward mod. FFM. Debuted. Do you that think this probably... was what inspired you eventually to make your own series of Face Forward Simpsons characters? I would say that's exactly correct. But probably in, in a lesser sense, it was just seeing random pictures on the internet of them looking bad Face Forward. Yeah. But only Lionel and Maud are Face Forward in that. Everybody else is regular Simpsons sort of three-quarter three -quarter angle. So we are treated there. And I think it's based on the Maud that you see when they meet the bushes. Because that's the most, that's the sort of famous face forward Flanders picture, isn't it? Mm. When they're all stood together looking like at the camera, yeah. smiling. It's the best one, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Should we get to some content? Yeah, is it not too early? No, it's not too <laughs> early. It's late. No, have... It's not too not... early. It's late. No mountains. No mountains today, eh? no mountain high enough, etc., etc. Clip one. Do you want to give the good people some some context for this content? Yes, Salina Estetis. Um, 
You keep your hands off from them. Who did the mountains again? The, the, what was his the, name? The artist was called Ken Reed. He did a quite a bunch of them, and the other artist was called Bing Image Creator. After last week, after crossing the Ken Reed mountain range, Ken Reed, the deceased icon artist who lives in Space Heaven, Ken Reed. I didn't mention his name last week, so I'm doubling down. Um, it's time to look at some content. Hello. We're all over the place this week. We have, in the space of one episode, three different types of mod. And that's that's three types, as many as we need. My mod's got no consistency. Yes, but we are treated to, yeah, just a, an odd mod scattered episode in the middle of season 20. It was very odd, isn't it? This first one. Take my eye, please. Season wow. 20, episode 10. She lives. It is a picture of a sideshow wall of fame presentation, just like what we have at the end of our uh, cast cast. And on the wall, we have um, Poochie, Mr. Tina, the smoking monkey, El Barto, Fat Tony, sideshow Bob. Um, don't know what's going on, but as you zoom out, and as Zaz freeze framed it and slowed it down, we have the Flanders family, Ned. Todd, Rod, and two arms stretched out. Maud Flanders. What <laughs> the heck is going on here? Is Morgana visiting? Her, did you notice her before um, the slowdown? No, no, not at all. I was like, she must be in this crowd because of what you said. But there's only when I actually paused it and I looked around for a bit and I'm like, oh, well, la la. Yes. I did not catch this one. The internet caught this one. Okay. And yeah. I don't. I don't know how many of these there are. I don't want to reveal to you how many I've found, but it's not lots. I thought there was going to be lots more. No, it's not one. Is it two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As of now, it's two. But there could be lots. I just don't really know how to check without watching, like, every episode post-season 11 again. Let's crowdsource it. Why don't we all, all of our listeners, why don't we all watch one episode each, freeze frame, image by image yes all three of you get on it hey, um, got lots of views why don't you have a look at how many views you got last in the last episode that mountain one you ready that's not let's have a look it's a shame our stat man uncle can't tell us anymore because he's Dead been murdered he? oh, nice. that's just me doing the voice thought so that's meta isn't it what's that uh, twin um oh, i said you can't hear it can you i started playing the last modcast over this modcast uh 21 people mm -hmm. 21 views. Brilliant. This is an hour and 50 minutes of bongo. It's a lot of fun, to be honest. I, as you can see from my red line, I'm only about 75% of the way through it, but I'm enjoying it. It's good. And... Even the hosts haven't listened. <laughs> um, anyway, that's her. Absolutely. She She's back from the dead and she's in a crowd. NBM story. Uh, this is the first Simpsons episode to be in HD. And I remember at the time watching the new credits before this episode came out. They released, like, the credits, I think. And uh, she wasn't in them anymore. And it sickened me. Sickened me to my core. Yeah, a bit more than you would imagine. So I then didn't watch it <laughs> out of spite. Um, and then, but Natalie watched it for some reason. I don't... I... But for some Nat reason, Natalie listened to it? Oh, stunning! For some reason. For some reason. Natalie watched it, which is, I don't know if she was, I never pegged her as an independent Simpsons watcher as late as season 20, but here we are, she must have been. Uh, and I, I, I remember her talking to me on the uh, 2003 to 2000 and whenever popular at MSN, and I said, she said, have you watched the MSN Messenger? Yeah. Yes. I had not watched it, and she said, you should watch it, so I did watch it. And it's chock a block with Maud. Really? Have we covered it? It's this episode that we're now covering. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's why I'm telling this story now. It's good time. I've known this. It? I've known this story the entire Maudcast. <laughs> I just thought now would be the best time to bring it up. It actually um, is the best best time, right? I do have a theory as to what how this mistake slipped through, though. Mistake. Mm. Mistake. I think that they have a graveyard wall in in real world in real Los Angeles with really and Max Don Graham and Rupert Murdoch in the room. Yeah. And what's his face groaning. Uh, I assume they've got a graveyard wall of deceased characters who can't appear in crowd scenes. That usually seems to be the way it's done to avoid situations like this. And I think because they were changing over to HD, they then had to redesign 
everybody in HD and the fact that Maud, young Maud is in this episode, I think that, so she got a HD rendering. I think that confused them or confused somebody, got her off the graveyard wall and whoever was doing it just thought, oh, I guess they brought her back at some point and I just don't watch the pro like the show. And then they, she just got put in because they assumed she had been brought back. That's definitely what happened. Yeah. Within show, uh, I had a longer a, a longer reasoning for this, but you already said it. Yeah, I think it's Morgan. I think it's, it's Morgan, Morgan and her mother, Rochelle, which I wrote before remembering that the cold open was about both of them. So this yeah. all worked out pretty well, hasn't it? It all worked out pretty well, except for, for her, whose her husband was obviously killed. By a t-shirt cannon. Oh, the bittersweet and irony. And her, her cousin. cousin. She may have actually killed her cousin. We never established whether or not she did, right? Yeah, no, I think we left it up in the open, but I would like to say that she did for money. For money, probably. And we never, we never uh, hear the end of that, will we? Good to. No, we'll never hear the end of any of this. <laughs> Springfield High School, question mark. What is the local high school or junior high? We see elementary school in every episode, but we never... Almost never see the junior high or high school. Um, anyway, it is the 1970s or something, and there is on stage Chalmers, HJ, and a blonde dude. All of the great ten lean and beans germinated. There is a cheer. Is this her? I ask. Yes. Is this her? I don't think no. it is. Um, I've got this as Maud, and here is why. There's some shenanigans going on in this episode as well that I didn't reveal that um, some of these clips are actual flashbacks and some of them are like hallucinatory what if flashbacks so it's not all one flashback story this it's some of them are real some of them are um, fake this one is real really it's still I have noted though it's still confirmed unconfirmed that this is actually our mod because the design is off a bit the hair's a bit too dark and the nose is wrong, but if you look at sort of the rest of the crowd around her, they all sort of look like the. There's a couple like that could be Disco Stew, a couple down from her, but badly done. Um, Apu, maybe. You know, there's people you could at a stretch say it's somebody, and I think because you see somebody who looks definitively like Maud in the next clip wearing the same clothes, it's probably supposed to be the same character. I think so. And she speaks like Maud, right? It's proper Roswell. I say, who else we got? But you already answered that. We got uh, Inyaman Apu, possibly, and then we got possibly discussed you. But that is that it? Is there anyone else you would you would say? I say she in the middle could be a potential Laurie Goodman, and next to her could be Lou. Other way, be. could well. I, be. I said you see the long-haired guy as well on the other side of fake Laurie, next to Apu. That could be Skinner. If you like, I've noted in the next clip. I didn't see him in this one, but. There's a clip where he's like front and center, and it does look like Skinner. Also, like it's not Chalmers on stuff. It's Principal Don Dellinger. All right, looks a lot like Chalmers, the young Chalmers. That looks a bit like Lenny. Look at that. Like that's a Lenny. very big uh, overbite. It's cool. Yes, that's a that could have been. That's what Maud should have had. What Maudy should have had. Look at that. Yeah, that's not that's not our best Maud we've ever seen. But no, that's why I'm a bit. It's a bit sus, that isn't it? Yeah, it's unconfirmed. This didn't. This is the thing. Every appearance that we see this week is unconfirmed, Maud. I repeat. Good three. Yeah. HJ is on his hands and keens on stage, prodding at ripped up cards. School spirit, he says, panickingly picking up the cards. They all cut to the crowd, which are all laughing. Even given the dangerous curves debacle, I don't think this is her. That's where I was at at that point. Nice. You still don't think this is Maud? At this I didn't. Point? that point i was like mm, the nose is getting there actually on this one but yeah. still i would i would say this is definitively supposed to be maud in this yeah. one the, the clip two is up in the air but there's nobody else that could be like they wouldn't they don't really make background characters look like other characters that much especially when they've got like the rest of the credit and also it's supposed to be like a different version that we've not seen like a younger one yeah. So liberties are allowed to be taken, like, longer her, but the nose is uh, just off. Well, believe me, liberties are being taken, left, right, and centre with this. Liberties all over. This one is also still a real flashback, um, especially, like, given that she's mocking Homer, it also makes more sense why she's there. 
Um, but it also throws everything we've said about her backstory up into the air, uh, if that is her. And also, we're now at the point where it's easier to retcon an actual clip from the show and say it's not more than retcon the backstory we've created. Yes and no. Yes and no. I think there's a convoluted way that somehow Maud is in this high school just for a short time, and then she goes back to regular Springfield because we have we know nothing about this age. This is this is prior to her going to Oral Roberts University. We have literally no idea what happened to her before that. Yeah, no, I could. I'm I'm on board for that. Was the only thing I had in my mind was that it was some kind of transfer for a month situation. Easy, which is also how we got her to Edinburgh. Well, so did, you know, in those days, they did a lot of those transfers and kind of stuff, right? But I'm sure maybe we'll hear about it in the diary. Who knows? Maybe. And here's here's what I'm speculating now. Uh, Morgana lives in Springfield, or lived in Springfield, grew up in Springfield. And okay. they did some kind of, because they look like each other, they did some kind of uh, parents trap kind of week. ETW. Now, I'd like to hear all about that parents trap week because we don't, we haven't heard much of a Morgana interaction. This would make sense that she was in Springfield, right? Yeah, and we've seen we only have Bongo Springfield to go off, but she seemed to live in town. She was swanning around like she owned the place, wasn't she? She was driving, talking about RuPaul, like Todd. It me, Luna Sizemore. No family tree. Here, cold mid. It about wolf. Anyway, thank you for coming to your pitch meeting here um, at Moldovan Fox. Uh, Vanilla, thank you for coming. Uh, Maggie Roswell, if you can just sit quietly in the corner. And uh, I've invited Jack Derrida along to uh, see you perform. So off you go. You've all been shut out of your respective industries. Off you go. Mana, 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 mana. In Nikian, Kaz, in Nikian Kaz, Mana, Mana, in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz, Mana, Mana, in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz, Mana, Mana, New Azi, New T Prospect ECU Mine, Suntem Maru Impruna, Nedisvati T, Sorori Panala Kapat, Yesam Dor Pentru Distracti, Sala DB, Iati Law, Fuga, Putum Skoto Lovatura Din Tyne, Fiat, Ardak Amar Iskites DCU Pharmacil Tail, R, Poti Samarti in Brait, Ardar Daka T Fortezi Asupra Mea, R Lucra Isle Bor Devani Urat, Ubito, Copal, 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 in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz. Mana, Mana, in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz. Mana, Mana, in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz. Mana, Mana, new RZ, new T. Prospetti, see you mine. No way, no way. Not today. Don't freshen up with me. We are always together, inseparable, sisters to the end. We just go out for fun. Let the boys run away. We can get a kick out of you. Ah, if you tempt me with your charms. Ah, but if you force yourself on me. Ah, things will get ugly. Don't freshen up with me any impartesum reciproc secretele. New lua lucro riola, anima, prietani care va fi in tot diana adivarata, ami cautum p by a t, sine ne pot. Duchila noi culmi, sex appeal, intelligenta de resemania, ah dacari obrazul sargand st. Ah, ma poti cumpara cuo singura bortura, ah ha, treesti intero lum de vis. Bayet. Ah, do TC Kumpara TO Walter Jakari, Ubito, Copal, 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 in Nikian Kaz, in Nikian. Kaz ma na, ma na. In Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz ma na, ma na. In Nikian Kaz, in Nikian Kaz. 
Ma na, ma na nu arzi nu ti prospeti si u mine, in Nikian kaz, in Nikian kaz. I oars eat si e tok mai, mi as fus a sel tip. Oh, nu mi es puna, as puter avia oris fata ichi and quat. Don't freshen up with me. Chatbot can read all that stuff over a vanilla instrumental. Yeah. Goes on for a long time. <laughs> so what do you think of you guys of vanilla? Well, uh, I, um, I'd like to interject right now, and, um, I can see you shaking your head. Moldovan head of fox. Yeah, I think it stinks. This isn't even a television series. It, oh, sure, it's just a hole in the ground where we all live. And I still don't think you're good enough for it. Well, when discussing the 90s girl band Vanilla, it's important to consider the trace they have left in popular culture. Though they may have had a brief stint in the top 20 UK charts with their hit No Way No Way, their impact on the music industry has been fleeting and ephemeral rather than a solid presence. Vanilla is a situational possibility, a fleeting moment that has come and gone, leaving behind only a trace of indigestion. Deconstruction is not an operation of destruction, contestation. A contestation that leaves everything in its place. Me, Jock Derrida. While some may view Vanilla's limited success as a sign of their lack of talent or staying power, it is, it is important to remember that their place in the music industry is one not of destruction, but of contestation. They have challenged the domi domi dominant narrative of what it means to be a successful girl band, and in doing so, have left their mark on the industry, even if it is not a permanent one. Quite no way. That's harsh, isn't it? There is no essential. There is no essential, trans-historical and sufficient meaning that can be given to a concept or a thing. In a world where meaning of success is a constantly shifting and evolving thing, it is impossible to give a definitive or essential meaning to Vanilla's place in the music industry. Their impact and legacy will be determined by the cultural and historical context in which they are viewed, and it is up to future generations to determine the significance of their contribution. Ultimately, Vanilla's legacy is one of deconstruction and contestation, a fleeting but memorable presence that has left behind a trace of their influence. As I listen to the lyrics, don't get fresh with me, etc., I'm struck by the way in which the speaker is grappling with power dynamics at play in this situation. When the guy says to her, I could have any girl here, it's clear that he is attempting to assert his dominance over the speaker and the other women that are present. Now this he behavior- said that to me last week. The behavior is reminiscent of the concept of phallogentricism, which privileges the male perspective and dismisses the experiences and perspectives of women. However, the speaker's response of no way is a refusal, a refusal to submit to this dominant narrative. In my work, I have explored the idea that language is inherently unstable and that fixed meanings are constantly being challenged and disrupted. This line, etc., could be seen as an example of that disruption. As the speaker refuses to accept the man's attempt to define her worth and value, the line, he said that to, he said that to me last week adds another layer adds another layer to this analysis suggesting that this is not an isolated incident but rather a pattern of behavior that the speaker has experienced before it highlights the way in which the patriarchy is deeply ingrained in our society and the struggle that women face in pushing back against it finally the line well actually i think he's kind of sweet adds a layer of complexity to this situation it could be interpreted as the speaker attempting to down play the man's behavior in order to avoid confrontation or it could be seen as a genuine feeling that is at odds with the speaker's rejection of the man's attempts at dominance either way it illustrates the way in which power dynamics can be nuanced and difficult to navigate get out all of you <laughs> i don't know what you want derrida um, potter um, uh, roswell out everybody out i have to think you can't sing you can't play you can't dance frack you're and worst of all, way. you can't deconstruct. Content. I do like that he said uh, she's a 
um, they made a mark of not a permanent one. I like I am, if I was a pen, I would be a Sharpie. If you were a pen, you'd be one of those pens that's invisible until you pour piss on the paper. <laughs> Did you write that? Did the band I tell you thought, that? I just thought of it now. Therefore, still in the auditorium, there is a there is a lighter form jock, and all alike. There is laughter from from jock from jocks and all alike, but not Jock Derrida. Uh, non Mordy is laughing along. Lenny White stands. He has been chosen. Our president is a real loser. Yes, says Carl Black. Each he's a loser like us. He proves you don't have to be popular to have everyone like you. And with a gentle fist pump, he shouts, Homer, Homer. non Maud rises and joins in. Yes. Now this is a hallucination. Right. Now we're into the stage of... Essentially what happened is the guy that is was class president there, the blonde guy. Yeah. Was the guy that they were honouring at the Wall of Fame at the start. Okay. So it led Homer on to a thing of thinking, oh, what if I had become class president? Where would I have ended up? And then they go to, I believe, Luigi from The Simpsons, not from Mario. And one of Luigi's, like, old Italian relatives makes some sort of, like, hallucinogen soup. Which is why you sort of see, like, the end of one of these clips, you see, like, soup swirling really quickly by accident, because I just I didn't cut it out. Um, so that's what's happening here. Homer is now seeing a version where he did become class president and how that would have gone for him. So, so this is entirely like speculation mode. This is a mode that appears in the mind of Homer. It's meta, oh, it's metaphysical. Yeah. So again, we're, we're now we've had a mistake mode, a flashback mode, and now we're on a hallucination mode. Hallucination mode has got to be one of the, uh, the 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 most dreg dreg like mode of the entire journey. But but what would she be thinking at this point? about Homer Simpson becoming class president. Surely that's not something she would have expected, even in the short time she'd been at the school. And that this does explain why a hallucinogenic uh, Maud asks him to the prom. Spoilers. Yeah. No, it's... Um, this Maud is thinking, yay for Homer, because she doesn't exist even within the realms of the Simpsons. The actual Maud, I think, would just not stand up and cheer. She'd she remain seated. She would just look around like, is this... Is this what you all want? I can't wait to go back to my school. Which is called? Uh, it is called... Where did she grow up? Springfield Township. Oh, yeah. Springfield Township High School. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> to be to be determined. Uh, also, Kashmir and Stu seem to be in this one. But again, it's sort of like off-model in the crowd. If, when Lenny's talking, Maud sits unblinking with her mouth open, staring forwards. Now that's so the that's, mod we've come to grow and love. Exactly. That's why. That's exactly what I said. That that makes me believe that this is mod. Well, and all is proven very soon. Well, she's also teleported. She's now sat directly next to Lenny and Carl. As I said, original voice Carl. Um, after they Azaria got fired from that one as well, under the radar. Right. Um. Yeah. So she's teleported, which we've seen our mod do before. So our all these things are added up. And if you look around at the background characters of that specific bit, they're very season one-y. Like, I don't know if they've done it on purpose because they've just changed over to HD, but they're not like... If, like, Simpsons now, the crowd just look like people. Whereas here, they still look like... Or they've gone back to making them look like cartoony. Like, there's people with, like, blue afros and, like, wacky styles and, like, big glasses. Yeah, like, people that would stand out in, in a crowd where you don't need them to. Yeah, and I don't know if they did that just as a one-off because it's like the HD. Season one of the HD, in it? Yes, or whether that stayed for a while, but it's definitely not like that now. Um, five. Yes. Is it? It is Mordy, I say. Or is it? Homer is in his <laughs> locker. 70s Homer J. Homer Simpson. <laughs> Excuse me. 70s Homer J. Homer Simpson. Uh, Rathomes Rith Rothsteins spill out of a Mordy Ishteen. <laughs> Maudie walks along with her friend, her Asian friend, and she says, um, and we've never heard of this friend before, of course, but Maudie says, Homer, do you have a date for the prom yet? In full-on Roswell essence. Um, yeah. It is not a joke. 
I, th I think at first it's like, a, a, oh, oh, you're so mean kind of joke, but it's not. She looks <laughs> disappointed as Homie says, sorry, the only girl I could ever want is over there. We expected to be Marge, not Kuching. A glum look comes over Maudie's face as she realizes how low she has sunk. Demi Pinson, he points, as cheerleader Morticia Adams type is surrounded by three boys and she is sassing it. I yes. guarantee that even in this dream where he becomes um, class president, he still ends up with Marge, right? Um, yeah, I can't remember it ends, yeah, but it, it does definitely do it doesn't go on to being like he marries Debbie Pinson. Debbie Pinson is a um, a good callback to an earlier episode, though. In what way? I can't remember what episode it is, but he mentions uh, getting in touch with Debbie Pinson from high school, which irritates Marge. In the story, it says Homer would have been rich. He would have been in a better position at the nuclear plant and would have lived in a mansion on the site of where the Flanders now live. Ah. And Homer would not be bald. And the kids would not have been born because Homer would have remembered to use protection. Marge is confused <laughs> by this and tries to convince Homer that their lives would have been miserable without Bart, Lisa and Maggie. Um, so yeah, it, it appears that um, he does eventually end up even in his dreams with Margie. Uh, it, that's nice and obvious. Um, the obvious thing. When he changes his name to Max Power, yes. he gets a call from Debbie Pinson. Um, so that's where the name came from. So I like that. And I do like the it's the subversion of expectations that Homer did have a crush on someone else since there was a Debbie Pinson before Marge. Maybe he just doesn't know Marge yet. I can't remember. Doesn't matter, does it? I've just read this. It says her only line is something awful, like, I don't brain too well. I, I she really uses her head brain for anything. Oh, but yes, I have much to say. I think still a hallucination so that covers her being here. It's still I can't other than on the actual Maud Flanders page on Good Simpsons Wiki where it says that she's in this episode in a flashback. I can't find any actual confirmation that it's supposed to be Maud. Like I looked to see if I could find like transcripts, and I did, but it doesn't tell you who's speaking. For some reason. Really? It just has all the lines. It doesn't tell you who's delivering the lines. And within the appearances of that episode on the wiki, it's... Um... No, it doesn't, right? Is this the one you've seen? Oh, no, no this, isn't, this isn't the one I saw. I saw one where, like, some of the lines had um, people, but not all of them. When you search for Debbie. What makes you think Debbie? Because he says Debbie. He says Debbie? He says Debbie Pinson. Oh, right. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? And see, that's the version I, that's similar to what I saw. It's some of the lines, it tells you who spoke, and some of them it does not. It's too bad. So, but yeah, on the, she's not listed as being in the episode either on the Simpsons wiki appearances, but it's not, um, you know, anybody can do those. Yeah, IMDb. Oh, that's good. Take that as confirmation. Oh yeah, that'll do for me. Best McNeil is Debbie Pinson voice. I'm Hamilton Bess. A bit emotional, but still very funny. Okay. Um, no, there isn't a clip six, is there? There isn't. Exactly. She seems to be friends with who I assume is Cookie Kwan. What makes you think that? Friend. She just looks like Cookie Kwan. Is Cookie Kwan, she, she does look like Cookie Kwan, but Cookie Kwan is a, is a Springfield like native. She's been there a long time, or if, yes. even her whole life. I believe so. We only meet her in season nine, but it's not said that she's just arrived or anything. It's just sort of we didn't know her before that. Um, oh no, I was getting her mixed up with the uh, character that comic book guy married, but that's a character called Kumiko, right, from Japan. Yes, she comes directly from Osaka, Japan, in an episode. With Cookie Kwan, is a, what, what does she do when she's grown up? Cookie Kwan is Chinese, she's the one who talks about the West Side a lot. I see. She's very angry. I see. It's funny, but Maybe. I don't think she's allowed anymore either. Oh, that's too bad. Unless they've changed the voice. Um... Yeah, that was it. No way, no way. End of well, clips. Oh no, it makes sense. It makes sense that one of Homer's secret desires would be for... Oh, like, it, it makes sense that it was Maud who did this. It isn't out of the box in that sense because unrequited attention would be a... It would be a good goal for him to reject Maud because there's somebody better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, but, but whether or not he gets that better person or whether he's dejected is something I don't know. No, and there's no second chances with Maud. No, there are not. We all know that. Except for Ned. That was, it's a second chance. That was Edna Krabappel. You only get one chance with Edna Krabappel. 
Sad show, Bob. <laughs> anyway, enough. We're almost at the walls of Zanakis Castle. We're just on one of those little walls that's outside. Scale them. Come on, everyone. Let's scale the walls. Let's scale, do it. Scale, scale, scale. And now we're in the car park. It's and, littered uh, with corpses. Littered with corpses. Ashley, Rolly Fingers, Tom Hamilton, Bass. Statman uh, John. Statman John. They're all being picked up by ravens and crows and hyenas and, and carrion killers. And knee-high, beehive, a Twitter beggar. He's taken all the kidneys. Uh, he's he's feasting on them kidneys right now. Um, yes, he loves them. But we found the bins, and if you remember, the story is that if we wish really hard on these bins in the back of Zanakis' car park, we can get what we want. So everyone join hands in a circle. Come on, uh, stamp. All right. Um, Snaggy, woof woof. Um, Rod. Rod. That's it, Flimsy and Lawrence. Hello. All right, yeah, we've been here all along. Back I'm a bit you. dubious because I did this in a room the other week and then Tom Hamilton just laughed at me and said he was lying. Is this well, one anyway, be real? Everyone, Maud, 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 Maud. Oh, hey, you know what we've not done? We've not done the, like, welcome to the Maud Flanders Internet Mute. I haven't done that for weeks. Oh, yeah. Don't mind. That'll, that'll make it even better when we bring it back in Season 10, won't it? Exactly. Well, we're not at the Maud Flanders Internet Museum and Database. Man, you <laughs> weren't for the last seven seasons. No idea what's going on back there. Anyway, we do have some art while we're chanting. Yes, let's Funko. Let's Funko again, like we did last wave. time. Exactly. We're on a Wave 7 two-pack. Sure. Uh, we have a theme again for this two pack. No. Is it dogs? Yes, it is. It is dogs. It is the cult of Lyca, or nice. better known as MFN, MFIMDB5. Uh, space station, isn't it? Can you imagine? You remember when we first revealed we had a space station? It was all going so well. Yeah, we had all Until those this... dogs working for us, and then Jeff started a war against them. But they were and also been undermined by a, by a cult. Since we haven't been back to Earth. Since... Oh no, yeah, we have. But we haven't been back to present day Earth. Oh, no, yeah, Only briefly, are. briefly. Yeah, and it was it was it was a mess. We re- briefly we were back in Wigan for a little bit, but we ended up with zombies, etc., etc. Exactly. Michael, Toby, Buster, and Victor Max Duke complete the two pack because they are the uh, Chico. Chico. the two lesser known ones. Um, all of these are great. There isn't a bad one in this pack. In this five, they're all bad though, aren't they? Pack. What? They're all bad. They're all bad lads, except for. Three of them. I don't think any of them were bad. I think Jeff started the war. Um, They're all cult of Lyca. They were hair like They would wanted to destroy humans. Oh, yes. But from their perspective, they're not bad. Well, um, you could say that about anyone, really, surely. He probably thought he was bad, but uh, he had his reasons. Probably... I don't agree with him, but he had them. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like Michael Toby Buster's helmet. Cool, he seems it? to be a terrier. Retro. And he is wearing a suit. He does look very, uh, very cute. And Victor Max Duke is the little Chihuahua one, and he is just in your bog standard space suit with some kind of like what are those uh, the Jewish caps called? He's wearing a kipper. He's wearing a kipper, isn't he? Apparently. So yeah, Yam is a skull cap. Is is Yamake or skull cap? I think. Yes, them. He's wearing one of those, which opens up a new set of questions. Yamulke or a couple. Couple. He is, um, yeah, I like those two a lot. Moving on to the the rest of the game, we've got Commander Barker, who was the leader, I believe, who was a bulldog, and he's dressed a bit, I think he's intentionally dressed a bit Sergeant Peppery, I feel like I typed that in. And what again, do you mean, typed it in? To my hands. Oh, they sculpted created, these. Great, great created things. these actual, real, real-time figures. Uh, human legs, which is odd. Rex Woffington. I think Another all of one. these have got those costumes on, like the ones you see on Instagram, where it looks like they've got a human front, but really, was when you see them from an angle, they've just got a dog's body with, like, the front legs are in the costume. Oh, yeah, I can see. I'm up for that. Yeah, Rex Woffington is our... The friendly one who lives in Vietnam now, isn't he? Who does the hot sauce. Yeah, but he's still he's still sold us out to the cult of Lyca, right? He's still got to answer for that, surely. Oh, yeah, we'll hold him accountable, but his hot sauce is good, and this figure is cute. And we can't forget. He is. He looks cute a lot, and, and we we got a lot of dogs in our. Yeah, this isn't even all of them. Snap, snap. Snaggy's another dog. What other dogs have we got? Dog balloon manticores, one and oh, two. Yeah. That's right. And then there is the senior guardian, 
Manticore that I've introduced who lives in Space 7. Nice. <laughs> um, I'm sure well, we've got on there's loads of animals in general. We've got Terence, Onion, Porridge, Equine John. Equine John too. And I'm at Carbon Todd. Uh, yeah, Rex Wolfington is a good one. It's quite generic, but it's still cute. And the best one by far is original, so each you know one one. Who is really? based on that, that dog from that Japanese kids show. Oh yeah. One was, one. One one. Um yeah, they've nailed that one. It's got the got the right kind of green around the head. Looks fluffy. Got looks the right happy. stuff. Yeah. That is the one. I would buy all of these to be honest, but if I had to just pick one, it would be Suichi. I think I'd be tempted to go for Rex and then Barker nice. and then Michael. I think Suichi might even be my fourth choice. So we've we differed in opinions tonight. Nice. Commander Barker's face, I would agree, is the best one because it's yeah. it captures the bulldog of him. The essence of Barker. Really well. I think Barker and Michael Toby Buster, you can specifically tell what breed of dog they are from these Funkos. I agree. Good. Oh, oh, but the, 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 oh, we can see the void again, and um, it's all, oh, the last five times this has happened, it hasn't gone well for us. I wonder who's left. <laughs> who, who is anybody possibly... alive? Well, they're, they're either with us right now, or they're already dead, or they're guarding a mountain, or they're with Jack, so what we... Is anyway. Rod still with us? I can't tell. Dashley Potter, the temporary member and twin brother of Ashley, entered the dimly lit chamber, where Xenakis, the vampire king, sat on his throne. The doors burst open as Dashley entered, wielding a wand in his hand. What do you seek, mortal? Xenakis growled, his eyes narrowed in anger. Dashley appeared undeterred by the vampire's menacing glare. I've come to challenge you, Xenakis, he declared. I've heard tales of your unparalleled athletic abilities, and I wish to test my skills against you. Xenakis let out a cold laugh. You believe you can best me with your feeble human endeavors? Very well, let us witness your prowess. The vampire king rose from his throne and brandished his own wand, a magical instrument said to command the elements themselves. He conjured swift and powerful spells that sent shivers down Dashley's spine. However, Dashley refused to be overshadowed. He cast his own spells, the room resonating with the crackling energy. The two rivals faced off, each endeavoring to outshine the other with their magical prowess. As the duel intensified, Xenakis grew increasingly frustrated. He had always been considered the greatest athlete in the realm, and he would not allow a mere mortal to surpass him. In a fit of rage, he unleashed a devastating spell that collided with Dashley's wand, shattering it and throwing him off balance. Fear filled Dashley's eyes as he was struck by the spell, causing him to collapse onto the floor. Humiliated and defeated, Dashley stumbled backward, losing consciousness. The other vampires in the chamber watched in disbelief as Dashley's body hit the ground with a resounding thud. As the dust settled, the vampires exchanged wide-eyed glances, bewildered by the unexpected turn of events. They had never witnessed anyone surpass Anakis in a magical duel, and Dashley's fallen form served as a stark reminder of the Vampire King's indomitable power. Indeed, Onion remarked, Enough! Anakis snapped, silencing further discussion. Apologies for the mischaracterization. Let's revise the scene to accurately portray Vanilla and Dashiel as grown adults. The twin heirs of the Potter family, Vanilla and Dashiel, stepped into the dimly lit chamber with unwavering resolve. As fully grown adults, they carried the weight of their heritage and the responsibility to protect the wizarding world. Their determined gazes met Xenakis, the formidable vampire king, who sat upon his imposing throne. Xenakis, his eyes flickering with a mix of amusement and contempt, observed the Potter heirs with a derisive smirk. So, you dare to challenge me, he taunted, his voice dripping with arrogance. You think you stand a chance against my might? Vanilla and Dashiel remained undeterred, their wands firmly gripped in their hands. They exchanged a resolute glance before addressing Xenakis with steely determination. We will not allow your reign of darkness to persist any longer, Vanilla declared, her voice filled with unwavering conviction. In a swift and calculated movement, Xenakis lunged towards them, his supernatural speed and strength on full display. The Potter heirs fought valiantly, their spells and incantations intertwining with precision. However, despite their prowess, Xenakis proved to be a formidable opponent. With a powerful strike, Xenakis effortlessly deflected their spells and swiftly incapacitated the Potter heirs. Vanilla and Dashiel fought against the pain coursing through their bodies, their determination unyielding even in the face of defeat. 
As their fallen forms hit the ground, the room fell into a heavy silence. The other vampires watched in awe, witnessing the overwhelming power of Xenakis. It was a humbling reminder of his dominance and the daunting task that lay before any who dared challenge him. Xenakis, his confidence soaring, sneered at the fallen Potter heirs. Know your place, mortals, he proclaimed with a malicious grin, reveling in his triumph. Although defeated for now, the Potter air spirit remained unbroken. The memory of this battle would fuel their determination to train harder, to gather allies, and to someday return to confront Zanaka once more, for the fate of the wizarding world hung in the balance. But unfortunately, he tossed their incapacitated meat sacks over the balcony onto the car park. Blat. Oh no, that was awful. Oh no, who, like that person has died. Have we got who? time for a diary? Who was it? It's, it was really hard to say. We don't even know. Yes, we do have time for a diary. Um, we don't actually have time for a diary. Oh, no, we do. We've got like two minutes. Just start another we one. Time for, time for half, half a diary. No, I know. It's loads of time. And then we'll come back to the diary part here. Dear diary, I can't even begin to describe the intense anger and frustration coursing through my veins right now. It's Maud Goodman, and I'm seething with disappointment. Today, Homer managed to sink to a new low, leaving me utterly betrayed and furious. You won't believe... <clears throat> you won't believe the audacity of his actions, diary. That spineless excuse for a human being actually had the nerve to ask Debbie Pinson to the prom instead of me. A human going... What on earth was he thinking? I thought Homer and I shared a genuine connection. We spent countless hours together, laughing, confiding in one another and creating memories. I foolishly believed there was something special between us, but it turns out I was nothing more than a naive fool trapped in a fantasy. And who does he choose? Debbie Pinson, that vapid cheerleader with all the depth of a shallow puddle. She's nothing but a pretty face wrapped in a cheerleading uniform. What does she offer him? Does she even know him beyond his popularity and superficial charm? It disgusts me. I poured my heart and soul into preparing for tonight's diary. I meticulously selected the perfect dress, and I was perfecting my hairstyle and practiced my dance moves to impress him. But what does it matter? Clearly Homer doesn't give a damn. I might as well be invisible for all the attention he paid me. I long to confront him, diary. I want <laughs> to unleash my fury and demand an explanation for his treachery. How could he dismiss me so callously? What does Debbie Pinson possess that I don't? Does he find a more exciting, more captivating? Captivating. <laughs> Let me tell you, Diary. I am worth a hundred Debbie Pinsons. I am intelligent, and compassionate, and genuinely interested in him. And genuinely interested in exactly. If there were a million Debbie Pinsons in a room, I would equate 1.1 million Debbie Pinsons. <laughs> I long oh, I read that bit. I am intelligent, compassionate, and genuinely interested in him as a person. But alas, his eyes are blind to the truth. Tonight was meant to be a magical, a night filled with laughter and cherished moments we created together. Instead, it has become a painful reminder of how little I mean to him. It is difficult not to be consumed by bitterness, to curse his name and wallow in self-pity. But I refuse to let his actions define my worth. I will, be not, I will not be reduced to someone who yearns for a clueless imbecile. So diary, I will put on a mask of false happiness and pretend that Homer's betrayal doesn't affect me. I will dance with my other friends, including Cookie Kwan, and show him that I am better off without him. Perhaps, in his moment of clarity, he will recognise the magnitude of his loss. But until then, the fiery anger and profound disappointment will continue to burn within me, serving as a reminder of his betrayal and fueling my determination to find someone who truly appreciates my worth. I can't. There aren't enough Debbie Pinsons in the world to equate me. Furiously yours, Maud Goodman. Debbie Pinson's a bitch. Brilliant. Um, that was revel re revelatory. It was. It was bonkers, wasn't it? It was. She really doesn't like Debbie Pinson. Furiously yours, Maud Flanders. It still wouldn't swear for me, though. But that was way more bitter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Another vapid cheerleader. I also specified that she should be rude to Homer and nice to Debbie, and it didn't do that. Right. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be supportive of Debbie, and it, it took the opposite route. You do get fresh with me. Shall we end with the song? Let's. Oh, next time, I forgot. Next time, I have a moratorium for you. Brilliant. At season 9, episode 7, wasn't it? That's why it be. Chaos. Just FYI as well. I'll say this at the end, that's it. A wall Side ho, Bob. Side ho, Bob. Side ho, Bob. Hey, well, Papachi. Hey, well, Papachi. So much of you hers. Gem-renated.
lima beans, Gacrodas, Chia, Hans and Keynes, and the kingly the food is the jink, Orphatorium, Lenny White Sand, Sand to be every yang. It is morded, Homer a thumps, Kodjke, locks, disappoint morded, Relalysis, mordis, Derry Finson, Chill, chill reader, mortician, Sopronded, Mortician Adams. It's a good character, Nick. <laughs> Surprised. Yeah. Here, look, I remember who it was. It was um, temporary member Ashley's twin brother, Dashley. Oh, not Dashley. Oh, God, Dashley, we, we barely knew you. I don't even know who he ended up there. I think he was, like, inside her, like, um, inside her, her psyche. When she was killed, he must have been released. I wonder what the backstory oh, okay. is there. Like those twins from Legion. Exactly. Temporary, temporary member Ashley's permanent brother Dashley. <laughs>